Hey YouTube, in this video I'm going to be talking about how to run a more efficient 200. This video is probably one of the most important videos I've ever made on a 200 other than how to actually run the 200. And this is because your understanding of a 200 meter race is probably flawed. This is the same for a 400 meter race. So if you if you run 400 or you're going to be running a 400, this video is also quite useful. And that is because when you think of a 200 meter race, what do you think of? You think, okay, go to half of the track and then run half the lap. That's an entire 200 meter race. I'm going to run 200 meters. You're wrong. You could potentially run 200 meters or you could run more or less. This is because the entirety of the lane isn't 200 meters. Only what's really, really, well, not really even, what's really, really close to the 200 meter, 200 meter line on the inside is actually quite near the, the middle. That is 200 meters, meaning there's a good chance that in a lot of your races, you're not running 200 meters. You could be running anywhere between 395, not sorry, 395, 195 meters to 205 meters, or give or take a bit more. But what that essentially means is it's possible for you to essentially cheat the entire race and just remove a few meters so you're able to finish faster whilst doing less work. But in your training, you could make it so that you're always doing even more work just by focusing on staying on the outside of the lane and you just focus more on the inside of the lane. So listening to that, you might think, well, okay, well, now this is easy. I just need to make sure I just hug the inside of the lane. And it makes sense why you'd think that, but that isn't the most efficient method purely because when you come out of the blocks, as you come out, you're naturally just going to drift generally to the outside or the mid part of the lane just naturally because if you didn't what's most likely going to end up happening is you're just going to step into the other lane which is what we don't want so to make sure that you you stay in the race past 20 meters your body actually drifts outwards where it's easier where it just have more space because it's a curve you're going to essentially going to run into more space once you meet the curve slightly at a curved angle than if you was to head into the inner curve where you literally just in two, three steps, you'd run straight out of the lane, which means at the very start of the race, you're already putting on more meter than you need to, which means obviously a more controlled start would allow you to stay within 200 meters. Running 200 meters isn't the problem here because a lot of people you're going up against, unless they're not sub 20 sprinters, would also be running 200 meters or more in their races generally. So running 200 meters isn't the problem. It's running more than 200 meters, that is. So for the first part of the race, you just want to focus on staying within 200 meters. I generally would say about 50 meters. Then as you get closer to coming off of the bend, you just want to slightly look at the lane and just watch your body drift more and more and more to the inside part of the lane. You don't want to instantly get to the inside part of the lane. Reason being is if you suddenly turn, you're going to disperse a lot of your energy that you've, and a lot of the moment, the, sorry, a lot of the momentum you've already built up, which obviously isn't efficient or optimal because you've lost that and you can't really get that back. So you want to just slowly drift in and then before you get off the curve, you want to essentially be right next to the curve in best case scenario. And then when you get there, you might think, well, okay, now I'm here, let me just continue going in a directly straight line until I get to the other side of the lane and then now save myself even more time. That's wrong, purely because what you'd be doing is whilst yes, technically you would actually be slightly peeling off a few meters, you don't want to peel off meters in exchange for what the, the bend even gives you, which is a slingshot. Because by moving into the lane, what you're going to essentially realize is you're going to slingshot off of it. You're going to actually feel that when you're doing the first 100 meters, you're gonna feel like you're in water, trying to run. The water's a bit less viscous, it's more free flowing, a bit more similar to air, but not. So you're gonna be running and you're gonna be feeling like you've got a layer of something holding you back. And if you feel that, don't try and resist it. Stay with it, just accept it, because everyone else in the field is also gonna feel this. And if they don't feel it, then that's a, that's, that's a bad sign. Um, but everyone else in the field is going to be feeling this and when you feel this you don't want to fight it you want to accept it reason being the more you fight it the more energy you're going to use because just like how it would be if you tried to run 100 meters and on, on the water would use up a lot more energy than if you was to, to do in air is the same reason why you want to just accept it and just stay where you are 
because once you get off that bend this water is going to disappear and you've essentially been thrown into a slingshot at the same time so you're no longer just going to walk out of this water you're going to get a slingshot out of this water which means you can resist, finally start to resist it and now you've got air which is nice and then you want to get slingshotted out which is also going to propel you forwards even more and this is where people start to re-accelerate you're not actually re-accelerating it's just the the torque from the bend is disappeared and now you're putting in the maximal effort you was holding back so now as long as everyone else failed this first hundred you can start to really really easily pull away this is what they when people talk about when they say this person ran a good bend or this person ran a bad bend it's because if you just pay attention to the like their setup as they come off the bend, you'll notice some people are on the inside of the bend, some people are on the outside of the bend. And depending on the position you're in, it's obviously very bad because you want to have that slingshot. You don't want to cut off extra meters if it means that you don't get that slingshot because that slingshot is worth a lot more than cutting off those extra meters at the, when the bend is about to disappear. If you can, you want to cut off meters in the first about 80 meters where it it really doesn't matter because you just want to essentially cut down the time you're feeling this suffocating feeling from this from this water as i called it and you want to just get into just the air in that slingshot and then once you've gone out that slingshot just putting yourself in the air once you've gone to the final hundred there is no way to cut off any extra time just like how you can't really do i mean extra meters just like you can't do it in 100 meters because it's just a straight line it doesn't matter where you go left or right you can't save yourself However, it is possible to make sure you don't accidentally add on more meters than you would have wanted to when just more time. And this is by making sure that once you get into that straight, there's a good chance, there's a, is it possible, there is a good chance that you come around that bend and you're on the outside of the lane instead of the inside. Don't move over to the inside because just like how I said, if you come off the bend on the inside, you want to move out to the outside of the lane. You're going to end up losing your momentum. So wherever you are in that lane, you want to stay there. If you're in the middle, you can drift to left or right. It's, that's fine because you haven't really picked a preference. You're running a 200 meter race, a full 200 meter race, if you've actually managed to stay in the middle of the lane the entire time. So that's fine. But if you're on the outside or the inside, it's too late now. So if you're on the inside, this is a good position. You've you've done it right. You've cut off a few meters from your 200 meters race. If you're on the outside, there's a good chance you've put on extra meters and you can't really do anything about that but this is the part part of the race where it's just straight and if you move you're just gonna remove momentum it's just like how if you start zigzagging whilst you're running for example while sprinting you're not gonna be really be able to go anywhere because you're changing your positions and then your body has to slow down and re-accelerate and slow down and re-accelerate each time you change positions but if you just stay in a straight line your body can maintain its speed or accelerate efficiently and continue going up and up and just you're able to hold because when you get to near the end of that race you're going to start to run out of energy and if you're zigzagging then you're going to run out of energy much faster so at this point you just want to make sure no matter where you are in the lane no matter where everyone else is you just want to pick you want to stay at the side of the lane you've picked and not drift over especially make sure you don't drift over to another part of the lane if someone else like someone beside you is starting to pull away because generally in 100 meters you notice this um, people always, they they rarely stay in the middle of the lane. They always pick a side. They'll either go to the left or the right. And generally when you're going up against someone who's pulling away from you, or generally to person who's in like dead, if like winning first and you're right next to them, you're going to drift to their side. Why would you drift to the other side? Because your brain is like, I just need to get closer to them. And so you're just going to move over to them. And then you're like, okay, I'm closer now. Let's just get, keep closer, getting closer. And the only way you can get closer is without following the race is by going forwards. And then you, if you could you're going to pass them then you're going to win the race make sure you don't do this in the final hundred over two because you're just going to lose the momentum you've generated and it's not going to be a lot but it could be the difference between winning or losing if this part of the race is close and the person who's winning at this point is quite close to you they might end up slowing down earlier than you did because they didn't run as efficient as a curve as you did so this might be the last spurt before you just pass them or maybe you're winning the race and or maybe like they're right next you're right neck and neck and everything and you drift over so you can be close to them so you can make sure you get past them and then you do get past them but then they catch up which would be kind of weird because this generally doesn't happen in the 200 but it is possible because you've used up more energy and they potentially ran that bend just as well as you did so you just give them an opportunity to pass them 
because you don't know how long these people are going to be beside you and once you pass them you don't know how close they are you might just be one or two steps ahead of them you'll be generally able to tell by listening to the footsteps how close are you but if you can't hear them you don't know where they are so they could be close to you not one or two steps behind you but they could be close to you or could be far away but regardless if they're close to you you want to make sure you have as much energy so they can't pass you later on in the race if if it if the impossible does happen if they're far away it's just a time trial now so you want to make sure you get as low of a time as possible because who wouldn't want a low time and by moving around in the lane at this point could be the difference between getting a low getting like a sub time for something a barrier that you'd be willing to break or not breaking that barrier so ensuring that you actually stay at the lane side of the lane you picked is very very important if you like my video, like the video, let me know in the comment section below. Um, check the description because anything I forget to say in the video, I always put in the description. And if you like my content, subscribe. Helps the channel out a lot. Um, I post every two days at 1pm Greenwich Mean Time. If you don't know when that is, just hit the bell and then you'll be notified instantly.